One thing that I've heard over the years with any video game or piece of entertainment that people are hyping up is to manage expectations. And that's actually something I agree with most of the time. On this channel, for about two to three years, I speculated and made videos on just about every aspect of Rockstar Games' Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm sure if you go through my video history, you'll find hundreds upon hundreds of uploads talking about everything Red Dead Redemption 2. Before release, one criticism I often heard was that I was setting myself up for disappointment, and honestly, almost a year after release, I don't think that was the case. Sure, Red Dead Redemption 2 was not perfect, but it delivered on exactly what I was expecting Rockstar Games to nail, and that was the story, characters, music, and the open world. Red Dead Redemption 2 is definitely one of the best games of this generation, a game I personally got immersed into, and Rockstar really just made the open world feel alive. It felt like an actual world you were living in and exploring. By the end, with everything that happened, it was just an unforgettable emotional journey. Now, what's important to understand is that only every once in a while I will hype up a game like Red Dead Redemption 2. And the reason why is because of Rockstar Games' track record of delivering quality experiences. I feel the exact same way about other game studios such as Naughty Dog, From Software, and... CD Projekt Red, which as most of you have seen, I've been covering CDPR's upcoming game Cyberpunk 2077 quite a bit as of the last few years. But today we are going to be discussing some of the excitement surrounding Cyberpunk 2077 and some of the backlash CD Projekt Red is facing right now from fans who are upset about only 15 minutes of gameplay being revealed in the next few days, as well as games journalists who have been criticizing certain aspects of the game, such as gunplay and driving. As usual, if you do enjoy this content and want to show your support for gaming news like this, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing for more, and turning notifications on so you do not miss out on any new content. Now, managing expectations is indeed important. And I'm not going to crap on anyone for feeling skeptical about a game you're spending like $60 on, but of all companies, personally for myself, I have faith in CD Projekt Red because of their past actions and commitments. Some other game publishers I have red flags with any game being developed under them that includes Electronic Arts, who typically is delivering unfinished live service disasters, or implementing shady business models that hurt the overall experience. I have the same feeling with anything coming from Activision, which is why I strongly believe the upcoming Call of Duty Modern Warfare will probably be ruined by, well, it's not going to be a probably, it's almost definitely, will be ruined by egregious predatory macro transactions a few months after launch. With Blizzard, I've become very skeptical for the future of this publisher because of some of the things that have happened in the last year, which includes leadership jumping ship and greedy Activision really taking away the publisher's autonomy. Uh, Bethesda, again, is a company many of us should have been skeptical with, uh, especially considering their big studio Bethesda Game Studios dated technology which continues to be a major problem that remains unresolved. But it's not just that. Bethesda has been pushing to monetize their modding community, and the publisher's increasing push for microtransactions, again, wrong word, macrotransactions and live services makes me question the future, especially after some of the recent critic and financial disappointments or flops. So yeah, whenever I see a game announced from any of these publishers, I'm skeptical just because I know the quality is not always there, and additionally, monetization seems to be a focus which in some cases has ruined the potential of some of these massive experiences. A game I personally am excited for but will remain skeptical is Spider's Greedfall, releases actually in a few weeks, which as the developer has described, they're trying to fill that Bioware void which is why the game kind of looks and feels very similar to Dragon Age. Everything so far about the game looks great but because of the developer's history of delivering not so great games, I'm skeptical, but keeping the game on my radar. I think it really just is a important to emphasize that I manage expectations when I feel it's needed, but in some cases, as it is with a Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, or Scorsese film, I just expect quality, and that's how I feel right now with CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077. But clearly many feel differently. Now, before E3 2019, many were disappointed to find out that CD Projekt Red would not be releasing their new gameplay demo online during the event. It was exclusive to those who attended the event, but like last year, this footage was said to be revealed later on, specifically during PAX West. 
and a secret message from CD Projekt Red which was uncovered in the Cyberpunk 2077 E3 2019 Collector's Edition unboxing video, CDPR explained the decision, saying, Yeah, we can already feel the bashing you're going to give us online. Why are you not treating us fair? Why is this gameplay not being released right away? The reason is we want to make the most out of the months of work we put into this demo and first showcase gameplay live at E3 and Gamescom. Releasing gameplay right away would make the Gamescom presentations pointless and would significantly limit our chance to build hype. Why do we need to build hype? To get more gamers interested in Cyberpunk 2077, and hopefully convince them to give it a go. We are putting our hearts and souls into making Cyberpunk 2077 a great game, and we would like as many gamers as possible to find out about it and experience its amazing story. Also, hype can turn into sales, after all we are not a charity, and good sales allow us to grow, take creative risks, and deliver new great games for you to enjoy. With PAX West only days away, more details about this upcoming reveal have been shared, and quite a few people are less than thrilled to find out that the entirety of the footage will not be released online. CD Projekt Red revealing in a blog post that they plan on August 30th in a live stream to unveil a 15 minute edit of what we've been showing to journalists and gamers here at Gamescom, and then interview devs from the studio for additional information on what you just saw. As I noted before, many were disappointed by this announcement, and of course the theories are already emerging for why CD Projekt Red is doing this. On Twitter, under the official announcement post, you have many stating their disappointment, and some going a little far with their frustration. I'll highlight this one exchange in which a user says, Only 15 minutes? Come on, you originally said we'll get the full demo. Why are the press getting more access than us? Please reconsider. I'd rather wait and watch the full thing than a cut-down version. And then a second user followed up saying, Indeed, we actual customers who will buy and play the game are bottom of the barrel to them, when we should be top priority. This is not 90s anymore. In 2019, you show your product directly to the customer, and now they are even lying to us. <sighs> gosh. Out of all the game companies in this AAA industry, CDPR has shown how much consumers mean to them through their positive actions, which includes being honest, transparent, and delivering quality experiences. But I guess to some, let's just ignore all of this? Come on, people. But let's just continue, because there is a reason why CD Projekt Red is only sharing a 15-minute edited video, which I will say it's not every day any game publisher releases hour-long demos. It's astonishing to me how quickly some turned on CDPR by announcing they're only releasing 15 minutes of footage when most publishers won't release more than a 5 minute gameplay trailer. Anyway, the official explanation comes from Cyberpunk 2077's community manager, Lalea, who posted on the official Discord that, I haven't seen the 15 minute edit yet, but I've seen the long one, and I fully agree with the decision, it's massive spoilers. This way we make sure it's full of content with the most important features shown. As you might expect, this response was met to some criticism, with some pointing out that games journalists have for weeks been spoiling everything shown in the demo through their previews, and thus CDPR's explanation doesn't make sense, which has resulted in some theorizing that CDPR is trying to hide the gameplay. As absurd as that may sound, various publications since E3 have been taking shots at Cyberpunk 2077's gameplay. DualShockers stated in their preview, but despite some highlights, I mainly felt a sense of underwhelming along with some apprehension mixed in with the content of the game. I was fresh out of seeing the controversial trans-focused in-universe ad featured in the game, and as of this writing, I don't know if I exactly buy CD Projekt Red's claim of social satire. Keanu's character, despite the hype surrounding his appearance, didn't seem to be too active in the story, and despite some complex RPG elements, everything else surrounding the gameplay itself looked rather too familiar. The sentiment was closely shared by DualShockers Reviews editor, who also saw the gameplay and felt that this year's demo at E3 wasn't as polished or impressive as the one we saw last year. That's not to say anything shown here was bad, it just didn't blow our minds whereas last year's demo did. Game pressure also is critical saying the core of the gameplay itself, shooting, sneaking, driving cars, or in the case of this particular piece, motorcycles, looks decent at best. Weapons lack a solid kick, opponents hide behind shields, but half of their body is always exposed somehow, and with the exception of one kind of enemies, melee warriors who jump at the player in lightning fast leaps, they're not very mobile on the battlefield. And furthermore, such an ambitious project deserves something more. The predatory feeling of Doom, Titanfall type mobility, or even better, some new original solution that could really surprise us, things are similar with the vehicles. The driving models seem shallow and too arcade, which wouldn't have been a big or a huge problem if we were cruising streets with some actual traffic. Then there's The Verge, which claimed that the demo was simply bland in general. 
the main mission's gameplay was largely a reskinning, albeit an unusually gruesome one, on average immersive sim-influenced gameplay. It felt more like a series of scripted events than an organic system that you could learn and exploit. I didn't see the kind of complex level design that games like Deus Ex or Hitman have excelled at, and despite their very different powers, the gameplay vibe for both Vs felt similar. They generally walk around a series of large spaces shooting and strangling people either loudly or quietly, sometimes opening a door, hacking an item in a unique way. There has been a lot of praise from various publications, but there are some criticizing the gameplay, which is what I'm emphasizing here. There's also IGN who raised concerns about gunplay, driving, and enemy AI. Polygon took issue with the combat, while the Dual Shockers and the Verge articles, as you just heard, concentrated heavily kind of on the misguided controversies, and it does feel like they were reaching for other aspects to criticize. Game pressure expecting Doom or Titanfall gameplay or gunplay is laughable, considering that's not what this game is about. It's first and foremost a role-playing game with a heavy focus on story. Cyberpunk 2077 producer Richard Borzomowski emphasized emphasized this point just days ago to PlayStation Access. You don't want this to just be an FPS though, and I think again that's evident in, in the demo, you know, we've seen lots of different ways of very creatively taking down enemies. So if you're not a first person shooter person, if, you, if that's not something you enjoy, well, what can you look forward to? That's exactly what you're saying, we are not actually an FPS, we are, we are a hardcore RPG, right? Like this is first and foremost a story driven RPG with shooting elements, let's put it that way. But yeah, many have used these articles as reason why CD Projekt Red is really trying not to show more Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay, and I mean, I just don't believe that's the reason. Lalea, the Cyberpunk 2077 community manager, did mention that the gameplay they shared to those who attended E3 and Gamescom is not 50 minutes long, but actually 30 minutes, and look, to poke a hole in this theory, I find it far more likely that CD Projekt Red in the 15 minute video probably just will remove certain conversations conversations related to the story and instead concentrate on the actual gunplay and driving mechanics. They also probably want to limit how much of the world they show, so most of it is a surprise come release day. As Lalea stated, we want you to play the game, not watch the entire game on stream. From what I have read of this demo, it takes place somewhere around the halfway point, and there are some aspects that are very spoilerish. You have to understand, majority of the general public who will play Cyberpunk 2077 have not read IGN's preview and never will. But many of them will watch that footage, which yes, gives away parts of the story. But from what I have seen, the gameplay looks enjoyable, gunplay looks fine, driving I haven't seen enough of, and in a few days we'll have more footage to judge, which I imagine will incorporate lots of gunplay and driving. Most importantly though, Cyberpunk 2077 is still 8 months away, and CDPR is still developing and iterating on tons of features. Interestingly, one criticism I've heard with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is that there were some people who hated the combat, which personally I really enjoyed it. With Red Dead Redemption 2, that was also a criticism I heard. Some did not enjoy the gunplay, and personally I wasn't crazy for it, but that wasn't why I purchased or was excited for RDR 2. I was looking for a quality emotional story with great characters that you cared for which is exactly what Rockstar Games delivered on. With Cyberpunk 2077, the aim isn't to deliver Titanfall gunplay, and I'm perfectly fine with that. From what I have seen, it still looks very fun with tons of journalists sharing that same sentiment. Even though I highlighted the Dual Shockers and some of these other articles that were more critical, there are hundreds of other journalists that feel differently. But in a few days, there will be more footage to judge, and for anyone truly angered by only 15 minutes being shown, the game release is in April 2020. There's a lot of time from now to then for more trailers and gameplay to be revealed. If I remember correctly, Red Dead Redemption 2 did not even get its first gameplay revealed until two to three months before release. But for anyone actually thinking CD Projekt Red is trying to hide gameplay, let's take the tinfoil hat off for a moment and recognize that CDPR is arguably the most honest publisher in this AAA gaming industry, and I find it hard to believe all of a sudden, after years of building trust, that they're going to just lie. I think they've earned the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, what do you make of some of the backlash facing CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos, links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games, and again, thank you for joining, consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.